Uh, my name is Lee the Fever, and I'm the founder of a company called Common Craft. And since 2007, I've been a professional explainer, mainly through videos with paper cutouts. Uh, and tonight, I want to help you think differently about explanation. And I'll do that through a story of a woman named Shelby, who is a talented woman working as a development lead at a software company. But she has a problem. She can't seem to make, help other people understand what she's trying to say. She has a problem with explanation. So she has a meeting with her manager and says that this problem is keeping her from getting resources for her team. And the manager asks a question that she didn't expect. She said, have you ever thought about building explanation skills? Shelby had never actually even thought about this before. She explains things every day and thought that explanation was just something that was a built-in part of her life, like how she eats or how she walks. She was skeptical. Could she actually improve how she explains things? Her manager saw an opportunity and said, you're right, we explain things every day. In fact, we take it for granted. But the best explanations can actually make us successful and interesting. We are all explainers. But the problem is that we rarely take a step back and think about what makes an explanation work. We dive into a presentation without a plan, and then we get upset when people don't get it, they don't understand. The manager said that to solve this problem, we have to understand the cause. And, what, and she described what's called the curse of knowledge, which, which means that when you know something so thoroughly, it makes it hard for you to understand what it's like not to know. These incorrect assumptions make it hard for you to understand what it's like to be in another person's shoes. And those inaccurate assumptions cause your explanations to fail. Another thing that causes explanations to fail is this idea of the cost of understanding. That if someone's learning something new, they look at that learning as something that has a cost. And if the cost seems too high, they might walk away. And the role of an explainer is to lower that cost and make it easy. So her manager asked her, what are you trying to explain now? And she said, agile development. This is the hardest thing for me to explain right now. Nobody gets it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so the manager says, great, we have a problem to solve. And what we're going to do is create a plan for using explanations to solve that problem. We're going to package ideas into an explanation that you can use from now on. He went up to the whiteboard and, and drew out some stepping stones and said, at the beginning of an explanation, we need to give people an invitation to care and feel interested and confident that this is going to be something they can understand. The next thing we'll do is build context. This is not talking about the idea. It's building a world around the idea. It's talking about the forest first and then talking about the trees. Shelby took notes. Maybe she could talk about her team's role in the company and their goal for efficiency. Or maybe she could talk about the old way that they've done development and why it doesn't work for them anymore. The next subject was about telling stories. And her manager said, your story doesn't have to be a big developed story arc. It could just be about a person who has a problem, who finds a solution, and then feels happy. <laughs> And that's a really basic story format. She said, don't forget connections. Connect your ideas to ideas that your audience already understands. Use analogies. And always remember to, to adjust your language to your, audience, your audience's experiences. Shelby could see that it was coming together, that these simple stepping stones were becoming a plan for solving an explanation problem, and that the next step was to take that plan and write a script that represented her explanation. She saw that explanations could be written. These days, Shelby is an explanation maven at her company. Her explanations have improved, she's got resources for her team, and all the people in the development part of the company want to know her secret. And, and that's where we are today. I personally believe very strongly that explanations are a powerful skill. And that I want to see, I want, I want the world to be more understandable, a more understandable place to live and work. And to do that, I need your help. We need more explainers. We need people who build explanation skills and use those skills to create change and solve problems. And that's really what I want to talk about today. Thanks so much for having me. I'm Lee the Fever. Go Sounders! Go Sounders!